Wire up, Doc Holiday, and the shootout at the OK Corral, where a bunch of lawmen finally take down the vicious Clanton gang. That's the story. It's also one of the best movies ever made. But what really happened blurs the lines more between good and evil. It didn't even happen at the OK Corral, which I feel is a detail you'd get right. What? Everything is a lie. seen the 1993 modern western classic tombstone have we all only seen it? paula has it. <laughs> it's one of the best films of all time where kurt russell and val kilmer take on the roles of legendary lawman wire up and dentist cum gambler cum gum man dark holiday as their quiet life of subtle debaucheries cut short by curly bill and ike clanton winding up in the most famous shootout of all time at the OK Corral. <laughs> and then it's the outlaw cowboys who come searching for retribution. Also, there's a very long scene where Doc Holliday spins a little cup. It doesn't sound cool, but it's awesome. He spins a cup? Yeah, oh my gosh, it's so good. How, how have you not seen this film, Paula? I quote it all the time. I mean, what on earth do you think I mean when I keep on telling you that I'll be your Huckleberry? I assumed you meant my Huckleberry Finn to my Tom Sawyer, which I think is a good fit for the two of us. It actually is what that means. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> Damn it, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> the film is at best loosely based on the real events of Tombstone, Arizona. And while it really is one of my favorite films, the truth is far more bloody, far more vicious. And of course... Far more rootin' tootin'. Just how we like it here at Remember, Remember, the rootin' and tootin'est podcast in the West. We're both in the West. I'm in the West Coast of the U.S. and you're in the West Midlands of the U.K. Oh, it works on so many levels. You've already heard Paula, who I feel is some kind of... You'd be working behind a bar with a shotgun. I feel I could see you do that. Oh, yeah. And I'm Matthew. Who'd have died searching for Western gold? Let's be real. A hundred percent. You would have just gotten really lost in them there hills. And we never heard from him again. He had a map made out of a stone that someone sold him for all his money. He... <laughs> the year is 1877. Swan Lake debuts in Moscow. Emily Berliner patents her amazing microphone. Thank you very much for doing that. Aww. And the final battle of the Great Sioux War is fought at Wolf Mountain in Montana. But meanwhile, in a place that would eventually become Arizona, a US Army scout named Ed Sheeflin sets out to explore the land that eventually would become the Cochise County. He isn't looking for land per se, he's heard that there's silver in the hills, and after finding a very rich vein, he stakes a claim. Sheeflin was told not to do it. The West was a dangerous place. Tensions were between the tribes and the Americans were super high and his friends had warned him that the only thing he would find out there would be his own tombstone. <gasps> and so in honour of that advice, Ed names his claim Tombstone and the name just kind of stuck as the town grew around it. Tombstone, Arizona. This Ed Schiffling guy was a pretty fun person. Honestly, the first silver vein dried up and people began to leave town, but he struck big again and he named his second claim Lucky Cuss because that's what everyone was calling him. <laughs> you Lucky Cuss. Oh, man. <laughs> the town that grew around these claims was not for the meek or mild. Close to the Mexican border, it was a hotbed of smuggling both in and out of Mexico. Tensions still high from the Civil War were all fresh in people's minds, northern settlers and southern ranchers not always seeing eye to eye. If you were going to name a place after something that people call you, Matthew, what would that be? Welcome to Rapscallion. <laughs> welcome to You'll Never Get Far in Life Doing That. For me, I think it would be Welcome to Teacher's Pet. <laughs> welcome to She Sure Does Talk A Lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. In this town, there were more saloons than you could shake a stick at. Gambling, prostitution, drugs, and alcohol addiction were a common place as illegal firearms slung around the waist of anyone with fingers to pull a trigger. That's a good sentence. It was in 1879 when Virgil Earp strolls into town. This is Wyatt's brother. He's been appointed as U.S. Deputy Marshal and assigned to the eastern part of Pima County. Tombstone was the main town, and so that's where he was said to keep the peace. It's what's considered a lawless part of these here United States. And you have to remember, Arizona won't officially become a state until 1912. That's a long way off. Right, which we all remember here in America from our history classes. Yes. I find it fascinating that Arizona hasn't even been a state for, you know, it's not even 200 years, not even 120 years. It's crazy. Yeah, look, there was older stuff here. But we killed and rounded up and pushed out the people who made that older stuff when we came over here. So <laughs> everything is pretty young based on that. <laughs> Virgil might not be making as much money as the local town's law enforcement, but he's got more power, like an FBI agent over a beat cop. But for backup, he calls on his brothers to join him. So late that year, Wyatt and James turn up. There's money to be made in a growing town, so that's the plan. Are they officially sanctioned, like, by... Or is he just like, hey, bros, come help me? He's just asking his brothers to come into town to help him out. Interesting. This is followed up early the next year with Warren and Morgan Earp uh, arriving as well. How many kids do these Earp parents have? There's five Earp brothers in Tombstone at the moment. Oh, my gosh. I feel bad for their mom. That's a lot of rascally kids to chase around. Five <laughs> erp boys? I think you can call them vermin. <laughs> <laughs> While Wyatt is the famous brother, Virgil really is the head of the family. He does have a somewhat ridiculous and fairly tragic past. Mm. Virgil got eloped to a woman called Ellen Ramston just before he went to fight in the Civil War. And because her family hated him, they told her that Virgil had died <gasps> during the fighting. And then when he got back, they told him that she <gasps> had died in Oregon. It's not until later in life that he finds out that not only is she very much alive, but she also has a fully grown up daughter. Is that daughter his? Yes. <gasps> he remarries twice thinking he's a widower. The second time to a woman called Ali Sullivan, a reformed prostitute. Wyatt is also married to a reformed prostitute, a woman called Matty Blaylock. Wyatt's past is equally as tragic as first wife and daughter died of typhoid. Aww. And James's wife is a reformed madam, which I believe meant she ran a brothel. Yes. And I'm mentioning this because it's a fact that makes their lives harder for the Earps in town as their wives will never be able to be accepted by the upper classes to whom the Earps, by nature of being the law in town, were part of. Because everyone knows their history as yeah. prostitutes. The men of the family might be getting invited to the function. The women of the family will not be. That's so... Just like, uh let people move on. Let people let their past be their past. There's an incredible amount of hypocrisy in a town like that, I feel like, where every man's probably gone to a prostitute or two, you know, so... Yeah, right? Like, come on. What you doing in that saloon? I've seen westerns. So many of the brothers were lawmen already. Their father had been a lawman, and they were in town looking to start prosperous lives. The thing is that a band of brothers, mostly ex-lawmen, all good with guns, that's not good for the order of things in town as it stood when they arrived. So a guy called Fred White was elected mayor, and everyone seemed to pretty much like him. Mm -hmm. White gets a job as deputy sheriff in town, a job he thought he'd left behind, but Sheriff Sheeble likes him, so does Mayor White, and together they clean up them mean streets. The thing that goes wrong is when there's basically a bunch of cowboys. I'm going to refer to some people as cowboys in this, mm -hmm. and that's not a good thing to call an honest rancher. Mm. These cowboys were not honest ranchers, and really it's more of a name given to a gang of men in Tombstone. Mm. They were shooting guns and being rowdy in the streets, so Marshal White and Deputy Wyatt Earp go to sort things out. So Marshal White and Deputy Wyatt Earp. Okay, okay. I'm keeping, I'm keeping them all track. I'm, 
I'm keeping track of them all in my head. Don't keep too good track of Marshall White. He's about to get shot. <gasps> I just started to like him. I just learned his <laughs> name. <laughs> Marshall White goes to take Curly Bill's gun. He's one of this gang. Uh, it goes off shooting him in the groin. <gasps> Ooh. Wyatt gets angry and pistol whips Curly Bill before taking him into custody. Loose cannon. Very much so. And the discharge of Curly Bill's gun and shooting of White, by all accounts, is an accident. But what wasn't an accident is Wyatt getting very angry and smashing a pistol off Curly Bill's head. It's understandable. Honestly, he could have just shot him. But he wouldn't technically be a fair thing to do. Marshall White's wound goes bad and he dies two days later. And because of this, Wyatt Earp, having released the cowboys, he then goes off again to charge Curly Bill with intent to murder. And the town goes nuts. They didn't see what happened. They have their opinions of Curly Bill and they, they go up and grab him. They're going to hang him. But Wyatt gets to Curly Bill first. Essentially saves his life. And along with Virgil, who's taken Marshall White's place as lawman, they take him to Tucson for his own protection. And Mo Morgan Earp, by the way, also now an assistant town marshal. Just somehow all these people are just like law enforcement because they're related. Yeah. Which is, sounds like a crime family to me, but you know. So the town wants to kill Curly Bill, but now Curly Bill is relying on the protection of the Earps. It's fair to say, looking into this whole situation, that there is perhaps some nepotism going on. The Earps were lawmen by trade. Mm -hmm. But having the whole town essentially being protected by one family has to have its downsides. Yeah. Such as vendettas and personal gripes getting in the way of things. Curly Bill gets off on this murder charge. Because they think it was an accident. Yeah, it wasn't first degree murder. These things happen. Mm. It's actually Wyatt that testifies that it was an accident. But Curly hasn't forgotten that Wyatt pistol whipped the hell out of him. And frankly, he's pretty unthankful about getting off on the charges and decides to hold a big old grudge. But, but he's the reason that the town didn't just out and out kill him. It's kind of bizarre, honestly. And this is a problem because Curly Bill isn't just some cowboy yahoo. He's one of the leaders of the Clanton gang. So the stage is set. While the town of Tombstone hums along, in the background we have a brewing, deadly rivalry between the Clanton gang or the cowboys versus the Earp brothers. And Tombstone, Arizona is just caught in the middle of it because their entire like law enforcement system is the Earps. Yeah, exactly. And all this is going on while things were generally just getting more and more dangerous in Tombstone. Just a sheer amount of gambling meant that... Well, you know that scene in a cowboy film where someone just shoots someone and the honky-tonk music starts for a second before everyone just gets on with it and yeah, you know, there's some uh -huh. poor guy, that the barkeeper's dragging someone's corpse out onto the street? Well, that was a genuine reality Ooh. for Tombstone. There are reports of that actually happening wow also if you look any of these people up it always says something something and gambler mm. it's like the second profession of basically everyone involved seriously a lot of these were gamblers by trade one thing going on in town that i found very interesting was the longest game of poker ever played there was a bar slash theater slash brothel called the bird cage theater and if you weren't renting one of the rooms, <laughs> you could go downstairs and play poker. There was only one game. That the buy-in was a thousand dollars. Wow. And the game lasted eight years, five months, and three days. Holy cow. That is an expensive buy-in too. For back then, that's a shit ton of money. Ten million dollars is said to have changed hands with the bar getting ten percent. Holy cow. So they would just swap in, like, new players? Yeah. But the game would never stop. That is so interesting. There is a side note as well here where Wyatt runs for sheriff but agrees to back out and become deputy sheriff. But the guy who wins double-crosses him and then Wyatt starts to sleep with the new sheriff's ex fiance. Oh, boy. The cowboys are on the new sheriff's side. It's just so messy. Oh, the Wild West. 
it's just lawless in many ways. Like, I would love to, like, play a character in the Wild West, but I'm so glad I didn't actually live in that. I think the Wild West really exemplified life being cheap, and that's yeah. hard men, hard lives, and it was difficult, I think. It wasn't cut out for everyone. And in an upcoming episode we'll be doing in the future, you'll find out that it's certainly not the kind of place you should send a group of paleontologists. But <laughs> that's getting <laughs> off track. Tensions need to break. And so it's here that we enter the OK Corral. Only we don't ever enter the OK Corral at all because the most famous gunfight in history doesn't even happen at the goddamn OK Corral which is a piece of information that really bugs me. It's just branding for the OK Corral. Why do they say that? Why do they say that's where it was? They just made it up so that people would go there? It's just down the... It's just... It's down the street. It's close-ish. It might as well be the OK Corral. It's just, like, right nearby. It's, you can, like, spit in... Everything's a lie. It's now October the 26th, 1881. Ike Clanton of the Clanton Gang has been going that around town the whole... That is exactly 100 years before my sister was born. October 26th, 1881. That's the next line in this. That's I literally the next I line it. I was going to say. That I was going to say, and that is when Aaron was born. <laughs> 100 years later. At the OK Corral. Mm-hmm. Ike Clanton of the Clanton Gang has been going around town the whole night before and saying that if he saw one of the Earp brothers... He'd shoot them on sight. And this is all largely down to the fact that the Earps were keeping the law, though not always abiding to mm -hmm. it. Whereas the Clanton Gang, or the Cowboy Gang as they're known, were operating outside of the law and getting told off for it. They're not that different. No, they're not that different in many ways. And Ike is saying that he wants to kill the Earp brothers, so Virgil finds him the following afternoon and arrests him for having guns in city limits. Mm. But he also smashes him over the head with the butt of his gun. This is all happening while the other brothers were pistol whipping another guy called Tom McClory. They loved whacking people with their guns. Don't they know those guns shoot? <laughs> Stupid cops. Well, I think some law in town was probably better than no law in town, Paula, but yes, they were really annoying people. This is when they hear that a posse had got together in town. They were armed and they were out for up blood. Yeah. Virgil, Morgan and White, along with their friend and now temporary <laughs> marshal, Doc Holliday, oh, walked across town to meet them head on. It seems that they were outside where Doc had been staying because they also wanted to kill him over run-ins they'd had with him. Doc had saved Wyatt's life back in Dodge City at the Long Branch Saloon back in 77 and they, they shed a lot of the same predilections mm. let's say and he's there on the street next to fly's photography store the shootout at fly's photography store we've all heard of it we've all heard of it you know what though the, i have always just called fly's photography store the okay corral exactly we all call it you that know, anyway we all just call it that anyhow because of how close it is and fly's doesn't mind like it doesn't need the name recognition <laughs> to get people to go inside and get their picture taken. Fly's Photography Store, where your picture will turn out okay. The camera is not the only thing that shoots. <laughs> get corralled inside for an <laughs> okay photo. We've got all the headshots you could ask for. <laughs> 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 Anyone get any more before we move on? <laughs> I, think, I think I'm tapped out. That's all my brain could do. So they're outside next to Fly's Photography Store. And the showdown is about to go down. Ooh. I'm sure elsewhere there were uh, was a hoedown, but that's not Jeez. what happened here. <laughs> this is a 16... Or a photo down. That's it. This is a 16-foot alleyway, and they stood about six feet away. The shooting order and who shot first is very intricate and detailed. There are witnesses. This is in the middle of the day, pretty much. And while no one knows who shot first... Han. Han Solo. Did. Pause for Paula joke. <laughs> How can I not? How can I not make that joke? What is known is that the Earp posse was armed and ready to fight. But the Clanton posse weren't. <gasps> Ike Clanton was unarmed. What? For starters. And he ran off. Billy Claiborne was also unarmed and ran into Fly's photography shop. But 30 seconds and 30 shots later... The gunfight was over. 
leaving three cowboys dead, and the youngest of whom was only 19 years Oof. old. Well, why were they walking around saying they were going to shoot them on sight if they didn't actually have guns? I don't think they expected the Earps to call that bluff. Talk a big game, but didn't have much to back it up. I, w- I've, I do want to be clear, though. I'm not just saying that the Earps were just a lawless band of brothers that took the law into their own hands mm. and run roughshaw through towns and do what they wanted. I do think that, but I'm not on the side <laughs> of the Cowboys and um, the Clanton gang. Not at all. Curly Bill, who wasn't at this shootout, uh, but I'll use the Skeleton Canyon Massacre to describe the type of character of some of these people. Curly Bill was involved in this ambush of a Mexican trail herd, killing and torturing six men before (gasps) selling off their goods. Oh! And even if he wasn't directly involved, this is the type of thing that they were doing. Mm. These weren't Hollywood cowboys who were rooting, tooting, and be- cheating in a game of poker. These were murderers. And these were not lovable rascals. These were dangerous criminals. But I do think it's important, though, to talk about the Earp brothers, and I'll do that through Wyatt's sordid past. A family of lawmen, marshals, deputies, and sheriffs who were brave and true is one way of looking at them, but that takes away so much from who they were. Wyatt was constantly arrested in Barton County and filed a lawsuit against him for legal fees. He got arrested for stealing horses. In Peoria, a larger town with a very loose laws, Wyatt and Morgan were arrested a bunch of times for keeping and being found in a house of ill fame. Morgan owned a brothel, essentially. He also got arrested on a boat that was being used as a brothel. I like that. That's an interesting business idea. A brothel that's a boat? Um, okay. I'm, uh, yeah. You don't even have to do any moving. It's just yeah. literally the motion of the ocean that gets you going. <laughs> In which it, Wyatt had become a deputy, but he was fired for using the office to get his brother's jobs. Mm. He was fired for nepotism. So Ike Clanton survived and filed charges against them. And so Doc and Wyatt get arrested for murder. But eventually they are found innocent as they were attempting to disarm the posse. Who were already unarmed, though. Largely, but not totally. It's now December 26th. Virgil is crossing the street when assassins open fire. They don't kill him, but he loses the use of his arm. Oh my gosh. Merry Christmas. He was, that's what they said. Happy Boxing Day. They said, Happy Boxing Day, you mother. Fucker. Because <laughs> they had machine guns. yippee ki yay, Doc. None of what you said was true. Where we're, you're going, you don't need horses. He was headed towards a hotel in town where the Ups had been staying for just this reason. They knew this feud was by no means over. It's three months later during a game of pool at a saloon one evening that Morgan is assassinated by gunmen shooting through the locked back door. Wait, through the locked back door? He just shot through the door and then pff, like a drive-by kind of situation. The next day on March 19th, which is Wyatt's birthday, where he turns 34. Oh my gosh, they're so young. There's a quick trial and one woman actually says that she overheard her husband, Frank Stillwell, plotting the attack. But... The Cowboys just pay people to say that they were somewhere else. It's Mm. later that White is told by the judge that if he wants to see the murderers come to justice, (sighs) he'd have to do it himself. White's like, don't got to tell me twice. They didn't have to tell him twice. It all gets a bit convoluted. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ike Clanton and the others are plotting to kill Virgil when he gets off a train in Tucson. So they head on to the train to stop that from happening. Mm. Virgil is put on a train out of town. And the following morning, Frank Stilwell is found dead (gasps) face down on the tracks. Oh. (laughs) A warrant goes out for the Earps. It's obvious what's happened. But it's now the Earps and Doc Holliday that the ones in tombstones with guns and no good reason. They are back in town for blood. Oh, my gosh. The sheriffs are the ones that now form a posse. But on March 22nd, after the Earps go after Pete Spence, he's turned himself in for protection. Mm-hmm. But at his ranch, a guy called Indian Charlie Cruz, who's thought to have been the lookout during Virgil's assassination attempt, well, he's found dead. 
jeez, they're taking they're they're taking everybody out one by one. So they're like, oh, you're going to pick us off like flies? Well, we'll just come around and pick you off like flies. It's very soon after, and only by chance it seems, that at Iron Springs, the Earp Posse run into Curly Bill mm. and a few of his men. And a few moments later, Curly Bill is dead. <sighs> Jeez Louise. After a couple more murder warrants for the Earps, they leave for Colorado. It's a sad story. Matty Blaylock, Wyatt's wife, dies of opium addiction, mm. first waiting for Wyatt and then... After another bad relationship, she's 38 when she dies. The list of where are they now is just tragic. It's full of early deaths. But Virgil Earp will eventually go to Oregon where he's reunited with his daughter. He didn't know he had and then he, they stay in touch after that until his death. Well, that's something. That's nice. Doc Holliday dies in a hotel room in Colorado, finally succumbing to his tuberculosis. At 36. Jeez. When I think of these men, I think of older men. Yeah. Not people my age. Yeah. And what happened to Wyatt Earp? Well, he was the last surviving Earp brother. And the last surviving participant at the gunfight at the OK Corral actually flies photography. (laughs) And he died at home in Los Angeles from chronic cystitis, aged 80 years old. Wow. So he lasted much longer than everyone else. So that's the story of the shootout near the OK Corral. (laughs) And you always think of it as being this story of good versus evil. The Earps versus the Clayton gang. This noble bunch of people taking out these rapscallions. But I tell you what, there are no goodies in this fight. Yeah, it seems like just a story about two groups of people out for revenge i think we should do a show at some point about forgiveness i don't know how that fits into (laughs) this thing that we do but they really could do some forgiveness let me tell you how good forgiveness is it'll stop this type of stuff from happening i'll tell you you won't get your whole family killed one by one uh if you just let some shit go and also the thing is this is the west they can all just move on go somewhere else yeah you know, there's this whole thing where they go from town to town becoming lawmen. That's the kind of like the the Earp's MO was to go from town to town becoming lawmen here, lawmen there. Go somewhere else. It's also interesting how this is always like thought of as like the shootout at the OK Corral. But really, that's such a that is literally 30 seconds of this whole story. Yeah. It's interesting what gets remembered and what we like pick up on culturally and what was actually like a meaningful or a substantial part of the real story. There's a huge story that spreads off in all directions. And the OK Corral seems to be just the epicenter that people think about. Yeah. Probably because it's the most exciting bit, right? It's flashy. People remember it. It doesn't spread the idea that the Earp brothers were essentially on a murder vendetta against everyone who tried to get in their way in many ways. And, you know, the the flashes, the actual literal flashes from Fly's photography. You couldn't see anything. You couldn't see anything. Poorly. It was yeah. surprisingly little documentation of the actual event. <laughs> considering being right amount, next to. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of photographers that were present. It's crazy, honestly. Oh. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for digging into the research of this and kind of pulling apart legend from fact a little bit. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to watch this movie. Probably should have as we like to prep for this episode, but I'll check it out. And yeah, I think maybe the story isn't about forgiveness, but maybe that's something we can all like take away from it and from this podcast episode is... Sometimes it's better to just let something go. Sometimes. I think one thing that people listening can let go of is their inhibitions and just decide to rate this podcast five star. Paula, you got any thoughts on that? Well, I'd love for you to release, let go of your reservations about subscribing to this YouTube channel. Give them the video a like, leaving us a comment to let us know what you think about the OK Corral, the Earps. The Claytons, 
the all whatever, the Cowboys, the not the football team, but you can talk to us about the football team. That's fine. Deion Sanders. That is my very dated Cowboys reference. Thank you so much for watching this video. Matthew, thank you for doing this research. And if you would like to listen to the show, it is also a podcast. Either way, share us with somebody who you think might enjoy a little peek at some different historical stories. See y'all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.